I wanted to start with a more or less musical question first. Uh, I don't know whether you're aware of it in Germany and here. There has been released a record by you strain, uh, entitled in German Liebesträume. Have you ever seen it? Called uh, Love Dreams. Yes, um, somebody showed me that record. Uh, and that made me uh, once more uh, aware of a sort of a discrepancy in in that in some of uh, some countries where your words aren't understood that well, you're perceived as a sort of a singer of sad but beautiful love songs. Uh, does that make you uneasy? This sort of reception. Well, that record made me very uneasy. Uh, it was the only record that has ever been released where, which I didn't design the cover and choose the songs. And uh, I gave my consent. It was just over the telephone. The, um, the head of the German record company said, we want to put out a, a compilation of your songs. And uh, I said, okay. I had a lot of reluctant feelings about it. He said, uh, you know, we think it, it's, it will do very well and uh, people will like it. And I'd already put out a record called uh, Greatest Hits in Europe and Best Up in America. And I did have a funny feeling about it because, as I say, I usually design the cover and I choose the songs. When I saw the album and uh, the kind of treatment that they had given these songs, I was... Uh, quite turned off by it. Mm. But sometimes those things happen. It's just a lesson that you have to supervise everything carefully that you do. Mm. On the other hand, there has uh, sh a short while ago been a cover of one of your songs, which I know you're aware of, of Avalanche by Nick Cave, which sort of uh, emphasizes the other side uh, to your songs. How do you feel about that? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm happy when anybody covers one of my songs. I ne I've never gotten over that thrill that somebody else has chosen a song and wants to do it. I think Nick, Nick Cave's instinct in choosing that song to cover was very good because that's just the kind of song that is made to be torn apart. And uh, I like the way he tore it apart. I like the way he went out with it. Mm. Uh, it seems to me that uh well, uh, Songs of Love and Hate was a very, in a way, very depressed or bitter album. So, so that Nick Cave maybe has taken that depression and and uh, put it over the top. There's a there's a number of young uh, bands and singers that um, seem to be connecting uh, with my work again. I think during the last part of the '70s and the early '80s. Um, people thought I was kind of over the hill or that I had nothing to say or that my work wasn't relevant. And it certainly didn't seem to fit in with the kind of records that the companies were putting out. So it's been very gratifying to me to see this connection of these new uh, musicians. For instance, uh, Ian McCulloch of uh, Echo and the Bunnymen. He, he just came to the last four concerts that we gave in... Uh, in England and Ireland, and it was uh, it was a great great fun to meet him and see that uh, you know the work still speaks to to people. Mm -hmm. Have you heard Suzanne by uh, the Flying Lizards? I haven't heard that yet. People have told me about it. It's very funny. Yeah. <laughs> 